the beauties of living in Canada is that we still have a functioning public library system. Books are expensive and although it is a delight to have one's own books, owning them isn't always necessary. Here in Regina, Saskatchewan, we have a great public library with a vast selection of delicious titles, new and old. My love for books comes to me from my parents. They owned many when I was a child and now they have none, but that's a different story. In our living room, on the bottom shelves of a wall of books within my five-year-old reach, they kept our photo books. Along with a hundred or so National Geographic magazines, there were a few true treasures. I have a vivid memory of books similar to the much later work of Tomasz Kiesny's Gulag, Life and Death Inside the Soviet Concentration Camps. Shots like those assembled by Kiesny are burned into my inner eye. They are visions that can't be unseen. These black and white compositions have been with me for over 30 years now. Another book on that shelf was Roman Vishniak's A Vanished World, which tells the story of Eastern Europe's Jewish shtetl life before Shoah. These and other books have shaped my view of the world in part because of the power of their vision, but also because of the sincerity of their subjects and because as a child, my parents took me to many of the places depicted in these books. In our home, especially through my dad, who had worked for a while as a photographer himself, I learned about Henri Cartier-Brousseau, Robert Capa, Dorothea Lange, and others. This built a deep respect in me for the magnum, photo, magnum group of photographers, people with cameras, with passion to document and to share places most of us would never really experience. A visceral kind of immersive therapy, if you wish. One of these magnum masters of black and white is Canadian-born Larry Towell. Our Regina library has a copy of his breathtaking series, The Mennonites. When you crack the lid, you find a tassel. It isn't supposed to be read in one day. Before we enter the lives of these deeply religious communities, we are greeted by three teenagers. One is puffing his cigarette smoke into your face, as a greeting perhaps. On Verso, a toddler sleeps amidst buckets full of cucumbers cuddled atop a moving harvester near the working hands of a woman. It's not just the smell of juvenile smoke and labor. Tawal is sharing notes from ten years of living near people who struggle with God at the end of a hoe. And he does it on Scrita, the cigarette paper stolen from a Bible. From Ontario to Mexico and back, before that from Ukraine, and before that from Menosimon's Holland to Prussia, there is much to be said about the lives of a people in search of safe haven since 1536. It's not my place to do so. I'm not a Mennonite or a historian, and I'm showing you this book to a different end. In all of its 115 photos, fewer than 30 document the life of Mennonite animals. Among the love, the kisses and cigarettes, the pain, dust, and yes, even the distrust, there are cows, horses, chickens, dogs, and pigs. Although a poet, Towell doesn't write much about them. I don't know her name. She's holding a pup. It's lanky legs and paws draped over her half bare embracing arms. It's a womanly picture. Her face out of focus, she's gazing to her left. Three quarter sleeve cardigan. A faint ray of light illuminates her elegant narrow band watch. My mother had one. It counts. And here it forms the center of a picture. Although it may be 1.30 in the afternoon, for all that matters, time stands still. If she was 12 then, and if she still is with us, now she must be 42. The dog is a memory. Maybe she still has the watch, if it was hers. The windows have been smashed, the engine is taken, but the carcass of this vehicle, which probably once moved a family from Canada to Mexico, it is a fine place to play. I remember playing in abandoned vehicles myself, the smell of old oil rotting upholstery, rusting steel. Calves know how to have fun. They bounce and pounce. They know how to live vividly in those days before their growing bodies come to dominate their movement, before we slaughter the yearlings and make the females into milk producers. This little one has used its nose to open the right side front door. What a glorious hideout. I remember walking the streets of Minsk in 1994, streets my grandfather helped build as a prisoner of war. Then this baby was born in La Batea, Mexico. 
I was 13 and this little person would now be 27? Where are they now? What a face. A welcomed man, proud father, or maybe brother? Sharp little eyes peering from a swaddling cloth focused on Tawald's shiny lens. Cheeks filled with breast milk, perhaps from the woman whose silky right sleeve graces the, right, the rough overalls. Maybe milk from the breast of a mother who will pull the stool and milk that cow's udder at 3.30? Out of the black shade of the left hand frame comes shooting a white hand. Is it a woman's hand? The directions are clear. The work is in progress. One person's kitchen chores, another's last day. The pig has bled out, forming a puddle of sticky blood and dust for a little blonde girl to frolic around. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh! Puppy loves to fly. When the power is back, when the carcass is cut, plug in that steel-made meat grinder. Kicking horse, driven tandem on an open road by two men in straw hats, nameless perhaps, unbroken, or simply defiant, rearing for a life beyond blinders, beyond the narrow path from Nazareth. What were you feeling that day? Who calmed you down? Who bears your testimony? Flung up hoofs of a free spirit. You've made history. Mennonite horse of La Batea. Your intentions remain unwritten, but your image is co-opted. You are now a symbol. And for yourself, did you ever find your place? Did you make your peace with those straw hats? When I hear that clinking of glass, that fizz pop and laughter, it's always followed by a brief scent of ferment. Water is good, grain is too. Mine will come later tonight. I'll be standing here for a while. Let them chatter. Slow swigging hastens the eve. Boys, not men, evading the pulpit, hiding the evidence. It could have been coke. But no, tainted conscience is what makes this work. Canada has brought us freedom in 24-hour towing. If the sun will not set, if this crop will not grow, maybe next year they'll go back to Ontario and I shall be sold. I've always been fascinated by intentional communities. In their midst, the darkness of our humanity seems accentuated, unfairly perhaps. It's easy to judge their members on a thousand different grounds. Yet what draws me to them is the glimmer of their underlying dream and the willingness to give up so much, no matter how misled, how conflicted. It would be ludicrous to claim I was better, more enlightened. These photos reveal my own humanity. But what stands out to me are the animal lives, mixed in with the life and vision of these people of the prairies and pampas of Canada and Mexico. These are stories of a multi-species society.